to 2007, that was 20 years. Tagal mo na palang nagtatrabaho, pastora. Now she's into another work, which is better, di ba? It is more fulfilling. And now she's an entrepreneur. So, kasama po siya ni Pastor Ton. Alam niyo po, behind every man's success, ay may babae doon sa likuran nun. Kaya, Pastor Ton, ang success mo, ang sikreto. Eto, okay? Oh, amen siya. Yan po ang sikreto. So, meron po silang, um, ang Flux Power Corporation, which deals with heavy equipment rental, tower fabrication, kaya kung magpapagawa po kayo ng tore, electrical and line construction, at si Pastora says po ay nahawa sa pagka-entrepreneur ni Pastor Ton. So, ang mga generic store po niya, I don't know if how accurate itong aking dala, no? Meron po siyang dalawa sa Metro Manila, may anim sa Isabela, at dalawa pang for approval. Tama ba ako? O approved na? Approved na. So, walo na po ang tindahan niya sa Isabela na generics. Tatlong stores in Laguna. And uh, so, at meron din po silang agriculture. Ito po, uh, agriculture and ano bang tawag natin dito? Agriventures. Avoda. So, ito po ay mga contract growing poultry with magnolia at sa Marana Isabela. Kaya, ako po, when I look at this couple at itong keynote speaker po natin, Wherever God will give them a business, sabi ko nga kay Pastora says, alam mo, ang purpose nun is to bring the gospel in that community. Kaya hindi lang negosyo ang ibibigay ng Lord sa inyo doon, kundi souls. Kaya laging magkadugtong, whenever God prospers, it is for souls, not just, you know, to have a good time on earth. Ngunit, ang pinakamahalaga sa puso ng Diyos ay souls. At ito pong keynote speaker natin, nakita ko po, na talagang lagi niyang iniiyakan whenever we pray, mga kaluluwa. So, I'd like us to just give a warm welcome to our keynote speaker, si Pastor Aces. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastora. Kulang pa ang research mo. <laughs> Please be seated. Praise the Lord to our dear mentors. I still want to call them my mentors because I started growing very fast in my Christian life when I met them. Pastor Cesar, Bernardo, and Pastor Rasitas, you will always be my mentor <laughs> and my teacher. To my husband, si Brother Ton, you are the backbone of this ministry. Without you, it will be very difficult for us to move forward. And for my children, you are not only my partners, but my inspiration. And to all of the Remites, I'm so proud of you. You have encouraged me to do so much for the Lord. And for the pastors and leaders of other churches, I encourage you to, to bring your leaders here. Amen. Okay, so today, I'd like to... Mukhang mapapahiya ako dun sa mga testimonies, ha? As I was listening to them, Lord, they made a good job. <laughs> Palakpakan natin sila. Okay. So I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. Let us enjoy the night. Okay, and I hope you will be blessed by, by the sharing, by the testimonies. So, congratulations to the graduates! <laughs> the first batch of the Reba World Institute. You are the first fruit and I'd like to wave you to the Lord! There will be more coming to the Rema World Institute. Amen. Congratulations. Okay, so I chose, um, I chose, um, what's this? Um, uh, text from the Bible. Can if you if you want, you can go to Deuteronomy one six to eight. I have titled this. You have stayed too long in this place. Okay. <laughs> so we need to move forward. Amen. Okay. Deuteronomy one verse six to eight. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, "You have dwelt long enough at this mountain." Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains, and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, 
as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. Parang go to all the world, no? And preach the gospel. Okay. Uh, as uh, the result of the nationwide survey conducted by Dr. Ba- Dr. Baby Ruth Santos Hablo for the evangelical churches in the Philippines revealed that the average church attendance in the regular worship services of the Christian churches all over the Philippines averages to only 50 to 80 believers. Okay, the real reason, according to her, is not the limitation of the growth expansion of churches, but the contentment of church workers and leaders in maintaining this average number of attendance. Leaders are not focusing on their attention in evangelism, but by maintaining the regular program as it is. Believers become content with routine and the status quo is staying in their comfort zones. We tend to fall into the trap, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, my kids are saved, my family is nice, I have a good life, so I'm comfortable. Brothers and sisters, alam ninyo, meron na akong nagawang message. But last night, when I was going over and I was praying for it, the Lord gave me this. And this is really, and I pray that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us. Okay? Churches can succumb to the same complacent attitude. We have a nice building. We have a nice sanctuary. We have, we have nice people. We have nice pastors. We have anointed pastors and leaders. We are rich. So change anything. Tozer said, if most churches were asked, what is the worst enemy the church faces today? Most would come up with the wrong answers. He said, the treacherous enemy facing the church of Jesus Christ today is the dictatorship of the routine. When the routine becomes lord of the church, in the life of the church, programs are organized and the prevailing conditions are accepted as normal. This is what happened to the Israelites. In our text today, the Israelites have taken 11-day journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. But it took them 40 years. Why? Because God Himself detained them because of their attitude. Mount Sinai to Kades Bernia Alam niyo yung Kades Bernia, it is where the 12 spies were sent to spy the promised land. It's only 11 days travel from the wilderness. But they had been held back and detained by God himself. But one day, God said to them, You have stayed too long in this place after 40 years. Ilang taon na po kayong kristyano? Ilang taon na kayong leaders ng church? It is time to move out and move forward. Amen? I know that God is speaking to me. He is speaking to you. He is speaking to each and every one of you. Amen? Maybe we have stayed too long where we are. Worship leader ka ng matagal. Move on! Be a pastor! Amen? Usher ka ng matagal. You are gifted, you are anointed for something bigger than what you think. Go outside the box. Go beyond your comfort zone. Alam nyo, Sarema, we can be very comfortable. Because we have a nice church. Amen. Bahala na si Bossing mag-expand. You know, we can expand, we can put on businesses anywhere we want because God placed us in that position. But where are we going to pull the workers? Who will pastor these churches? Is there anyone taking the challenge? Amen. Simula pa lang po. 
I'm so hot. <laughs> Amen. The statement, God said, you have stayed too long in this place. Takal mo na dito. Amen. You have become a decor. Amen. The statement was spoken by God because He wanted us to want them, the Israelites, to withstand the challenges of life. Life, the, life is a challenge. Amen. It is intended to make us stronger. Amen. Okay, so sabi niya, uh, number one, the biggest hindrance of, of, uh, of us as Christians is the tendency to live for the past. The past, both the good and the bad, tend to keep us stuck in the present. If we have failed in the past, then we may allow the past to tell us what we cannot do and what we cannot be. We allow the past to destroy what God has for us in the present. But later on, God will tell us also, you have stayed too long in this place. Amen. In Numbers 13, their forefathers explored Canaan but failed to enter it, uh, enter with it because of lack of faith. Instead, they had been held back and detained by God Himself until now, they never forget it. Hindi nila nakakalimutan yung nakarate. Eh, I failed in the past. Hindi man ko pwedeng magpastor. Ayoko na. Diba? We are special beings in that God has given us the ability to remember. Your memory may be your friend or your enemy, negative things or positive. Most of the times, we dwell upon the negative and begin to feel sorry for ourselves. Some leaders do not want to lead because of their previous failures. They do not want their failures to happen again. While others do not try because of the failures they see from other leaders. Nakita ko naman, hirap si pastora. Grabe. Ayoko ma-experience yon. But you are an entirely different individual. Amen? Amen. Uh, but not only the negative things. Even some very pleasant things hinders us to move on. The Israelites in the wilderness, Numbers 14, 3b-4, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt because Egypt is a good place to live on. So, nakamove on na sila. Naadala nila yung mga kinakain nila na mga cucumber, mga onion sa Egypt. Eh, ang kinakain lang nila sa wilderness ay mana. Bumalik na tayo sa Egypt. So, totoo yung sinasabi, if you are not moving forward, you are stagnant. Or, ba, ba, worse still is you are going backward. So, there's no option. If you don't move forward, you will stagnate in one place. You stayed too long in that place. Inamag ka na. Nilumot ka na. Amen. Okay. In Philippians, so what shall we do with the past? Sabi ni Apostle Pablo, I forget about what lies behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Move ahead. Amen. Forget the past. I-favorite ko yung kaya nga, binigyan ka kung sumasakay ka sa kotse, mas malaki yung, windshi- yung, yung windshield kaysa yung rearview mirror. Kasi gusto ng Panginoon, palitin mo na yun, then eventually forget it. Bad or good. Amen. So, forget the past. In a Nike advertisement, advertisement some years ago, a voice came over the television saying, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and I've missed. i failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Those words were spoken by Michael Jordan, by most standards, the greatest basketball player ever to play the game. Amen. President Abraham Lincoln was defeated for the Senate legislature in Illinois in 1832. He was defeated for vice, vice presidential ticket in 1856. He was defeated for Congress in 1843. He was defeated again for the Senate in 1858. He was defeated for Congress again in 1848. He became president in 1860 and lives on history as one of the greatest presidents in the United States. 
he forgot the past. Amen. Paul had a lot that was behind him. Paul had a very bad past. He persecuted the church. He used his authority to kill Christians. By his own admissions, he said, I am chief of sinners. He could have walked around all his life with this tremendous burden of guilt crippling him, and he would never have become the great apostle we know and love today. But Paul said, forgetting what is behind Amen. So, if what do we need? We need to forget the past. Number two, we have to start all over again. Amen. After forgetting the past in your mind, start all over again. Theodore Roosevelt said, The only man who never makes a mistake is the man who never does anything. Amen. Thomas Edison's famous laboratories in New Jersey were heavily damaged by fire one night in December 1914. Edison lost almost one million worth of equipment. That time, one million dollar is very big amount. In 1914, Edison lost almost one million worth of equipment and the record of much of his work. The next morning, w- walking about the charred embers of his hopes and dreams, the 67-year-old inventor said, There is value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Now we can start anew. Glory! At 67! Amen? Forget the past, then start all over again. And number three, then expect the best for your life. Expecting the best means don't look anymore to the negative areas of your life. Always be positive. Alam nyo kung tinignan ko ang handicap ko na may sakit ako dati, kung tinignan ko na babae ako, Rema will never come to life. Amen? The Israelites are pessimists. When the spies saw the people in Canaan, they, they are, are afraid of their size. They said, people living there are too strong. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Job also was sometimes a pessimist. And in Job 3.25, he says, everything I fear and dread comes true. Paul, on the other hand, was an optimist. In Philippians 1.20, he says, I live in eager expectation while I'm going through all these trials. Amen. Can you say that? I live in eager expectations while I'm going through all these trials. That should be our attitude. Amen. Now, sabi ko, he was an optimist. He could be cheerful even when life couldn't be perfect. Muhammad Ali do you know that, only, that he only lost two fights in his lifetime? Two losses. And both of these fights had one thing in common, different from all the other fights. In a press conference prior to the fight, he said, Now, if I lose this fight. It's the only time he ever said it, and he lost them both. Amen. David went out to fight Goliath and he took stones with him super confident. Everybody else was saying, he's too big, we can't kill him. David was saying, he's too big, I can't miss him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew 9.29 said, according to your faith, it will be done to you. Expecting the best means looking for the positive areas of your life don't focus on the negative. Number two, our tendency to live in the past, the, facing the challenges of life, may hindrance tayo because we live in the past. And number two, we have concern to live for our comfort. For 11 months, Israel had camped and lived at the foot of Mount Sinai or Horeb. 11 months had allowed the people to settle into a life of ease. They had grown accustomed to their surrounding and life was good. 
hindi ka nagtatrabaho, may mana, may may kalapat, ah, mayroong pugo pag gusto mo ng karne, no? In Amos 6:4 to 6, the prophet speaks to the nation of Israel, a nation that has become at ease and re- and really had no intention of being otherwise. Sometimes it's good for us to pray to the Lord that he will give us the blessing of discomfort. Amen. Lord, give me the blessing of discomfort so that you can move. If you are at ease, you won't move. Amen. He took them to task. The Lord took them to task for being at ease in Zion. In verse 4, he says, Who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on your couches, eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the midst of the stall verse 5 who sing idly to the sound of string instruments and invent for yourselves musical instruments like david who drink wine from bowls bowls and anoint yourselves with the best ointments but are not grieved for the affliction of joseph sarap buhay <laughs> That's why, for just a little problem, they thought of going back again to Egypt. And sometimes, even in this church, ma-offend ka lang ng konti, you're gone. Okay? If that is true of Israel, how much more true in our life and ministry today? We follow the Lord only if there are sure and enough support. We don't want to live by faith. We want to make it sure that there are foods in our hands to eat. As World War II was drawing to a close, the Allied armies gathered up many hungry orphans. They were placed in camps where they were well fed. Despite excellent care, they slept poorly. They seemed nervous and afraid. Finally, a psychologist came up with a solution. Each child was given a piece of bread to hold after he was put to bed. This particular piece of bread was just to be held, not eaten. The piece of bread produced wonderful results. The children went to bed knowing instinctively they would have food to eat the next day. That guarantee gave the children a restful and contented sleep. Sino sa atin ang ganun? If we are living by faith, we cannot be like them. Amen. So, na, sabi ng Panginoon, you have stayed too long in this mountain. One, because He wanted us to face the challenges of life. And two, He wanted us to stand on the promises of God. Amen. Okay. So, First, God wanted them to withstand the challenges. Then, He wanted them to stand with the promises of God. And how? God encouraged them to, one, make a bold step of faith. That is what we are going to do after this. Make a bold step of faith. Deuteronomy 1, 6-7, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Break camp. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Look at this phrase, break the camp and move. Why did God wanted to destroy their camp before leaving the place? They can bring them to the promised land or leave them in good structures that the travelers will benefit for it. Why? Because God wanted them to make a bold step of faith. Sunugin ninyo yung camp para wala na kayong babalikan. Amen. And some of us, hindi pa natin sinusunog yung bridge natin doon sa comfort zone natin para just in case may rapan tayo babalik tayo how can you move forward if that is your attitude amen okay Julius Caesar is one of the greatest commanders of western history when Julius Caesar landed on the shores of Britain with his Roman legions he took a bold and uh, he took a bold decision and stepped and uh, step to ensure the success of his military venture. Ordering his men to march to the edge of the cliffs of Dover, he commanded them to look down at the water below. To their amazement, they saw every ship in which they had crossed the channel and gulf in flames. Caesar had deliberately cut off the possibility of retreat. No retreat, no surrender. Amen. Now his soldiers were unable to return, 
but to advance and conquer. Amen. God had said, break the camp and move on. If you have been a Christian for any length of time, you should be prepared for battle. Amen. You should be ready for the service in His kingdom. In the past, God didn't ask that. Why? That way. God simply commanded them to go in and move on. But because of their untoward attitude and tendency to back out for faithlessness, God wanted to make sure that they will obey. <laughs> Kakatuha si Lord, no? He has his own way of uh, pushing us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is true with us today. Jesus is telling us, anyone who come after me and look back is not fit to become my disciple. Church workers today are like the Israelites. They have changeable minds. They will commit today and gone tomorrow. Konting problema lang atras ka agad. Konting-konti lang. Alam nyo ba yung problema ng Red Sea? Konting-konting problema yun. Amen. Let's make a bold step of faith to obey God once and for all. So, next, God challenged them to make a strong hold of the promise. So, God challenged them to make a bold step of faith and to make a strong hold of the promise. The promises of God. See, I'm giving this land to you. Go in and possess the land which I promise to give you. God has given us everything for life and godliness. Amen. This land is given to the Israelites long time ago, but up until now, they are not working and doing anything to possess it. There was no progress. They became comfortable to their present situation. Wala lang. Not doing anything, not working, not moving, not progressing. Most people never take advantage of God's abundant resources because of faithlessness. Ephesians 3.20 in the Amplified Version says, God is able to do super abundantly for over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. I have experienced that. And what I did was to only take a simple step of faith. And God will do the rest. We never tap into the tremendous resources that God has made available to us. But I know some are already blessed by God. In this church, expanding ventures, increased anointing, amen, increased wisdom and knowledge, increased sensitivity on the Holy Spirit, amen. There are promotions, there are businesses, expansions, amen. So, uh, the law of expectation says that basically we get what we expect out of life. Ang baba ng faith natin, kaya ang baba rin ng expectations natin. And the Bible school should have helped us already level up our faith higher and higher. Amen? Okay, so, but I know some are already, ay, okay, the law of expectations, we get what we expect out of life. We tend to see what we expect to see. We tend to feel what we expect to feel. We tend to act the way we expect to act. And eventually, we tend to achieve what we expect to achieve. So it all depends upon your expectations. So my advice to you is, don't go with the VDP, very draining people. Don't associate with them. But go with the VIP, very inspiring people, like the couple here. Amen. Unlike the Israelites, you have had to go in and possess the land. Alam nyo, ang mga Israelites, they had to in and possess it. Sa atin, we have already possessed it. We are only defending it and forcing the victory. It's a lot easier for us today. And So, sabi dito, we are better positioned in Christ because in Him, we already possess all things. What we need to do is believe and receive the manifestation by grace through faith. We have to appropriate these abundant promises for us. Like them, like the Israelites, God is moving us. God is moving us to, po to possess the ministry He had given us long time ago. 
He has spoken to you years and years ago. Until now, you are not doing anything. He wanted us to get into the mainstream of His perfect plan in our life. Be planted and committed to your Bethel, the doorway to heaven. Your church. Amen. In the church where God placed us as workers, as praise leaders, as pastors, as teachers, as youth work, whatever. Amen. God is calling us to go, move on, move forward. Make a stronghold of what the Lord has prepared for us. As Paul said, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward or high calling of God in Christ Jesus. A king is coming, so whatever you do, no matter how insignificant you might think the task is, do it as unto the Lord and He will bless you for it. Amen? George W. Truett was one of the greatest preachers in Christian history. Yet, in the closing months of his life, he suffered beyond measure the talk that took his life in 1944. Though in his condition he had sought to resign his pastorate of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, the church ref refused to permit it. The 47-year-old relationship was dissolved only in death. Imagine 47 years siya na nagpastor. Not long before Dr. Truett's death, Truett's death, arrangements were made for him to preach his last sermon to the congregation by telephone from bed. As the people listened over loudspeakers placed in the church auditorium, not one word of complaint over his mouth did they hear. The repeated refrain was, Be true to Christ. Be true to your calling. Yes, my dear fellow workers in the Lord, God requires us to be true to Him and our calling. Do not stay too long where you are now. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Let's advance and conquer the land. God bless you. Thank you, Pastora, for that inspiring message. Now we come, uh, you can all be seated. We come to the presentation of diplomas to be presented by Pastor Cesar and Pastora Cesar. Sirunai Hobita C. Risologo and Kathleen E. Risologo Ronald Jr. P. Cruz IBS. Cruz Nina Z. Dais Maria Rajel O. Dais Orly N. David Ernesto D. De La Paz Bonet M. Diaz Maria Tercita S. Tomawal Maria Jesus B. Esteves Crisel B. Fuertes Glenna Marie F. Fuertes Norman S. 
González Godía sí. Halal Noel R. Mariano Raquiza M. Obligación Caroline Ann R. Paular Catherine L. Santos Ian Paul E. Sarmiento Felicidad S. Sigawa Ryoichi I. Sugai Francisca S. Talatat Jennifer Ann Q. Talatat Michael Leo F. Viola Tita J. Fellow graduates, please raise your right hand as we recite our pledge. Altogether, there comes a time in life when we must bid farewell, a time when we must leave the threshold to forge a new path for ourselves. That time is now. As we leave the establishment which has taught us so much, we know that as graduates of the Rema Word Institute, a lot is expected of us. We commit to give our best. We promise to yield to the grace of God and make good use of what you have taught us. And we promise to uphold the belief that the graduates of the Rema Word Institute are doers of the word. To the undergraduates, we leave you in charge of the legacy of being a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, strength of character, to live up to the standard of excellence, which is the spirit of this school. We pledge to our alma mater that in everything we say and do, it will always bring glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not forget to set a good example which those below you are to follow. As we soar to greater heights with His Spirit, we can see that we can surmount all the barriers of life that may stand in our way because He is with us. To our mentors, we thank you for all the values, revelations, lessons which you have painstakingly instilled in us. We thank you for the time you've spent, the love you've given, the prayers and intercession standing in the gap for us. In our, in, keep in mind that neither time nor change can erase the memories we have at this training and preparation season of our lives. They are forever engraved in our hearts. The moment has come for us to make the great leap into the world. This is just the beginning of a wonderful journey. We make a commitment to uphold God's disciples in our lives with the help of His enabling grace 
as our eyes are set on the goal, nothing will be able to stop God's purpose from being accomplished in our lives. Thank you, Alma Mater, for equipping us to be a blessing to this world. over in you all things are made surrender my life to Christ I'm moving moving forward what a moment you have brought me such a freedom I have found in you you're a healer you make all things new yeah 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 I'm not going back I'm moving ahead here to declare to you my past is over in all things I made you surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. You have risen with all power in your hands, you have given me. A second chance, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead, I'm here to declare my past is over in you All things I made me Surrender my life to Christ I'm moving, I'm not going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to declare to you My past is over in you All things I made me Surrender my life I'm moving, moving forward. Okay, we will move to the charge. I charge you. <laughs> I charge you. Okay. Um, wait. <laughs> okay. I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by in the light of his coming and his kingdom, herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. 
Stand by, be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you, as preacher of the word, are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. And convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. So the charge, the charge, therefore, brothers and sisters, to go and preach the word in season and out of season. Amen? Amen. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the, uh, the graduates of Rema Word Institute um, school year 2011 to 2012, the first fruits of RWI. Uh, RWI congratulations graduate <laughs> praise the Lord you can now turn your tassel to the other side yay. yay and you can now throw your <laughs> cups throw your cups <laughs> a picture taking muna daw picture making muna daw Solid nyo na yung cups nyo. 